so yeah, so I'm going to be much less precise talk um, in that the, the term social machines is sort of uh, in the ether, uh, but it's not really yet, uh, there's still a lot that's up for grabs in terms of meaning and in terms of research methods and so on and so forth. Um, the term really kind of took off when we started to see new kinds or interesting kinds of, of social behaviour at scale facilitated by smartphones, uh, social networking, um, the, the creation of very large quantities of social data and the, and the computing power to, 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 to work with that. Um, so actually it's only, this patterns of behaviour only been around for a decade or so and the, and the term has, has um, uh, is, is, is still in evolution. So I should give a rather sort of high level um, talk. Well, basically, the, 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 the intuition is this, that we have uh, an, an idea that, you know, his society with machines, the, um, we have society, which is the sort of the, the fleshy pastel shade soft bits, and then there's the, the silver, uh, black plastic and, and metal bits, and we can kind of, that's the, the big division. Um, and the idea is actually you could possibly uh, start to talk more meaningfully uh, doing some vertical characterization of these agencies and, and, and sort of imply that this, this and this, each in their different ways, uh, have different kinds of agency. So what we're kind of thinking of, in, uh, we're thinking of how, how, what does human behaviour look like in the context of uh, networking technology, working at very large scales, a lot of distributed agency, um, self-organising groups, a lot of communication between people, but also between the technology, uh, the technologies and people, uh, people mediated by technology, etc., 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 with huge quantities of data. So the term itself, it's, it, you, you find the term in, in literature going back. I mean, uh, uh, Norman Mailer, for example, American novelist and, and, and Looney. Uh, writes about social machines in, in very uh, disparaging ways. But the, 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 the social machines research comes, there's sort of a quote from Tim Berners-Lee's book, Weaving the Web. Uh, it says, real life is and must be full of all kinds of social constraints, the very processes from which society arises. Computers can help if we use them to create abstract social machines on the web, processes in which people do the creative work and the machine does the administration. That's quite an optimistic view. We get quite a lot of um, social machines in which uh, the machine does the creative work and the people do the, the boring bits. But, and then later on he says the stage is set for an evolutionary growth of new social engines and he's talking about new fo forms of social process. So that's a kind of 1999 prediction of the sorts of behaviour that we're starting to see uh, uh, more recently. So if you can imagine a graph. This this graph actually works with it. You can do almost any any research topic you you, you like with this. But imagine as the, we get more and more people involved in computing and more and more machines involved. Uh, this this graph looks like this. So in the in the bottom corner, this conventional computation sort of stuff we use we used to people just working with laptops. As we get more people involved, uh, more machines involved, then we get distributed com uh, computation. Uh, grids, things like that. If we have not many, many machines but lots of people, then we, we start to look at things like social networks, and then social machines kind of start appearing in the in, in the top right corner. So you might have scientific com computation over there, but big data, when you get more people involved, you start getting big data, and ditto up the side, as more machines are involved, you start getting these kind of issues. And the general trajectory is just up into the into the top corner and things like artificial intelligence, machine learning and the Internet of Things, which we haven't talked about today, but which, which will be a big driver of all this kind of research, kind of pushing, pushing the, the large number of machines and the large number of people involved further and further. So uh, these are the kinds of problems. So. When you, when you think about not many machines involved, then you, you, we have you know, sort of crowdsourcing or uh, co-creation like Wikipedia, social networking. When we get into the top right, we start to look at things like social responses to emergencies, crime, transport, and so on. So you start dealing with, or, or at least trying to address certain social problems. So uh, I'm not going to define social machines. There's a number of reasons I'm not going to do that. And this is 
trying to summarise it, I think it's one of these concepts where you're in danger of either casting the definitional net too widely, so you, you include processes that aren't really very interesting, or too narrowly, in which case you'd miss out on some rather juicy examples that you'd want to include. And this is partly exacerbated because we've got really, really fast changes in technology and practice. Uh, of course, interlinked as they, they sort of co-create each other. And uh, it, it would be very easy to write a definition that completely missed uh, uh, some new, new thing on the horizon. Uh, you know, before, before social networking emerged in uh, the middle of the last decade, uh, I don't know anyone that really predicted it would happen. Uh, we, it's very hard to define in terms of, of communication because communication is mediated by the technology. So it's very hard to understand whether a person is talking to a person via a machine or whether a person is talking to a machine who's then sending instructions to another person. The, the structures uh, are, 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 are quite difficult to disentangle. So what I, I, like to, I like to think about, well, what methods are you going to use to look at a social machine? Because that will tell you the sorts of social machines that you're going to be interested in. Uh, I personally like, I, I'm interested in social machines where there's a very high level of social activity, where there's a lot of person-to-person -person interaction. Um, and I, I, I don't mind fudging the definition uh, to, to make it clear that uh, that's the sort of thing I, I'm interested in. So what I'm, I'm just going to give you a few examples of the sorts of things, because actually the examples are much more instructive than, than whiffling on about um, distribution and scale and technology. So here's one example, Ushahidi. So this came about in the context of there was a disputed uh, election in Kenya a few years ago and there was a lot of violence afterwards. Uh, it was very difficult to understand how the violence was happen happening and mapping the violence. And someone had the very good idea of, of uh, producing uh, an interactive Google map that you could upload photographs of the violence to. And in the technology, via your smartphone, very high level of smartphone, uh, usage in Kenya. So uh, because of the metadata in the photographs that were being uploaded, you could then place those photographs on the map. So you actually got a, a real-time dynamic map of where the violence was happening in, in Kenya and it was validated through being actual photographs. Uh, so that's an example of how you couldn't do that with the people with just with people, you couldn't do that just with machines. Nobody knew the entire picture, but everybody knew a part of it. So the trick was how to aggregate all those things to produce the map of the Kenyan violence. And that was a sort of a very uh, that was about 2009, I think. The the violence that was that was a kind of an early example. Here's another example. This is Cajun Navy. So there were floods in Louisiana a few years ago, uh, and someone set up a, a Facebook. Um, group or, uh, of boat owners who would react to reports of people being uh, stranded in the floods and th they would be able to, so they coordinated uh, a rescue operation entirely bottom-up, this has nothing to do with the authorities, entirely bottom-up across Louisiana and that's been replicated two or three times in other flooding incidents in, in the US. Here's a slightly more sinister one, this is Blue Servo, this is uh, large numbers of people who are concerned about immigration in the US looking at CCTV photographs at the Mexican border, at the US-Mexican border. So there's no wall here, as you'll see. Don't know why that hasn't been built yet, but there's, there's, this is being marked up as, oh, look, there's these, there's these infrared images, um, which is uh, uh, interesting and possibly disturbing. Uh, some social machines are utterly lunatic. This is a 4chan think tank. This is, so this is the, the Boston Marathon bombing and a load of 4chan users got together to really examine the photographs of the crowd to determine who the bomber was. And a lot of people thought it was this chap here with the baseball cap because here he is, he's got a bag and now look, he hasn't got a bag. And oh look, everyone's watching the race and he's looking over here. So it must be him, of course it wasn't him at all. It was a completely mad idea. But uh, that's another example of, you couldn't do that with people and you couldn't do that with machines, but you could do that with the combination. Here's a slightly more sanguine example. This is Zooniverse, this, this is citizen science. This is the idea that many, many people at scale can do certainly classificatory jobs within science far better than scientists themselves could do. 
Zooniverse is a platform for doing this, run by the University of Oxford. They run many, many projects on this. And this is Snapshot Serengeti. And the idea is that people, they, they have hundreds of thousands of volunteers doing this. Quite happy to look at uh, photographs taken by cameras set up on the Serengeti, and they identify the, the animals within that. This is the, this is the interface for that. So there are lots and lots of... Uh, social science projects uh, and uh, social science and science projects, a lot of astronomy stuff, uh, a lot of stuff um, decoding uh, old letters, so handwritten letters in the 18th century, very hard for a computer to read, but people can do it quite well, and getting the interaction. And what's the AI in, sorry, what's the AI in the I will now, I'll, next slide actually. Well, the AI, the AI is quite often social rather than machine. And, and there's, uh, uh, what I'm trying to get over is, or what, I, what the talks will try and get over is, there's actually not much of a distinction between the two. So, but uh, this is a slide of the, the Zooniverse platform. This is how it works. And this structure is very important. So what happens is you have your load of data, which in the case of Snapshot Serengeti is the, um, the uh, uh, photographs from the Serengeti National Park. Your scientists, your actual zoologists, will decide uh, what data gets put onto the Zooniverse platform, which sends that data to volunteers. Now, the volunteers, of whom, as I say, there are hundreds of thousands, so you've got very, very large-scale uh, interactions, do lots of things. They try and classify these, these, these objects, but they also they talk amongst themselves. So that's the top right there. Um, and they have lots of discussions and... Uh, they find anomalies, they worry about particular types of concepts, and that's quite informative for the scientists. They also talk directly to the scientists themselves. So there are, there are loads of conversations going on. Uh, I mean, you know, many millions of conversations going on. This data goes back then to the, their classifications go back to the Zooniverse platform, which then goes into a kind of AI module here, which is at the bottom right. So does all the stuff from the talk, so you can get a load of sentiment analysis, you can get a load of um, stuff about how uh, particular concepts are evolving, what concepts are being talked about, what, what concepts are being are controversial. And then the data science, you get a feedback to the volunteers, basically we'll, we'll uh, adjust the data that, um, that the volunteers receive via the Zooniverse platform. And indeed, it can do other things like uh, it, it, you can also start to look for particular human behaviour patterns, so you can start to formulate hypotheses about when a volunteer is getting bored and is going to want to do something else. So then you'll send that person more interesting input to keep their interest going, or possibly send them uh, messages about uh, exhortatory messages to say you're doing a wonderful thing for science. So I don't know if that makes that clearer. It's just talk, they're all online. Oh, it's all, online. It's all the whole thing's online, so they, ju they just store the whole thing and, and, uh, and pass it over. Yeah, uh, so, uh, you, so social activity happens, in fact, is it my, no, uh, uh, well, in fact, I'll just go on to this one. Uh, I want, want to draw a distinction between the platforms on which discussions take place, and these are things like Twitter, Flickr, Facebook, and so on, and the social machines that take place on the platforms. So, uh, as another example of a social machine, is often talked of as Mechanical Turk. This is uh, the Amazon's um, cheap labour uh, crowdsourcing system. And you find that sociality breaks out in all these things quite often. So, Amazon's model it, it insists that the people using the, the volunteers in Mechanical Turk, in fact, they're not volunteers, they're paid. Uh, don't talk to each other, so they try and repress that social instinct. And in fact, what then happens is you get a load of back channels through other, through other, um, other platforms. So uh, people on the same task will talk to each other by another route, which then Amazon can't capture. So the sociality of social machines breaks out all over, even if you try to suppress it. Zooniverse itself, the citizen science platform I was just talking about, actually encourages that. It actually encourages conversation talk. And its original models didn't. They've, they've learned that by trial and error. They've, they've learned over, over, many, uh, over many examples and many projects that 
actually, if you, if you provide a really good uh, forum for volunteers to talk both to each other and to uh, professional scientists, uh, you get far better output. And this concept, so that was a few examples of social machines, and this concept actually makes sense. So my colleague, Dave, David Derour of the Oxford e Research Centre, who uh, is the co-author of this slide set, teaches, and in fact, at this very moment, is teaching a digital humanities course in Oxford. And what, what we find there is that you don't need to do much explanation of the concept of social machines for, for, the, for the students to get it. It does kind of make sense. And this is an example of a, a social machine built or, or designed by um, postgrads based on a, uh, an existing um, a voluntary uh, charitable network in somewhere in Latin America, uh, a group called the Madres, the Mothers, uh, who basically uh, try and feed uh, homeless and poor people using leftover food from restaurants. And, and they, and they uh, immediately thought, well, OK, we can build an app for that, and that would, that would coordinate the behaviour in various ways. And they were very quickly, in the course of like an hour's uh, training, able to produce really quite complex um, designs such as that one. Um, how am I doing for time? I'm probably getting quite... Five, five to seven minutes. Five to seven minutes. Okay, I will probably skip. Um, I, I, I talk about the metaf the, the metaphor is a metaphor of a machine. The use, the use of the term machine is obviously a metaphor. Um, the, 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 those are the sort of the metaphorical interesting things. The, the slides you can download from the uh, uh, conference system. So I will just whiz, I won't talk about that. This is a slide about how social machines tend to group together. You tend to get ecosystems of. Uh, social machines, but I just want to talk briefly about, um, so I'm not really talking about a method of something, it's more of a sort of a perspective on a phenomenon, and the, the, the comparator I like to use is digital divides. It's very hard to pin down what a digital divide is, but actually it's a phenomenon that most of us see and can identify, and it's, social machines is a similar kind of thing. So you need the kind of methods you want to use to investigate social machines, you, you're looking at the same methods that you'd use to investigate crowds or crowdsourcing, network interactions, and indeed any kind of data or information processing. So it's a kind of descriptive layer of, granul of, of granularity that's between the individual and the web. It, it, it's, it's not a micro description of what's going on. It's not a macro uh, description. These are the kinds of methods that you would approach that kind of data with. But I think more interesting is uh, and this is something that is very nascent. How would you theorise social machines? And there's lots of ways of doing that. Uh, you could, I mean, all social machines are exclusory in some respects and inclusory in, in other respects. That's an interesting factor. Gender, ethnicity, all those, all these well-known divides. The big discussion, Wikipedia, I think, is a classic social machine. There's a big discussion about uh, gender on Wikipedia. It's very largely male-dominated um, uh, system and there's a lot of discussion about how that affects the output of Wikipedia uh, classification data, social, social construction technology, social shaping of technology clearly very useful etc uh, etc. Et social capital I think is, is a very interesting perspective uh, and, and the sort of Marxian perspective of well, what's the value, what, what's the appropriation of labour and how much of that value is going to the platform and how much to the uh, uh, people in the, in the participants of the machine is an interesting question. So the arising of intelligence, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll just talk about intelligence uh, very briefly. This is a very interesting example. This is a, a, te a, a contest. This was, again, probably about 10 years ago. DARPA, this is the American Defence Research people, set up this thing called a Red Balloon Challenge. So what they did, they put 10 weather balloons across the United States in these areas, uh, unannounced Areas they, that's that's where they place them. So you can see the whole it's it's in nine states of, of the USA, right across from 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 east to west. Uh, and then they the so they basically said uh, the, the 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 contest was uh, which there was a, a prize of however many uh, thousand pounds for the group who could find all ten balloons quick uh, fastest and. This was the winning, the winning uh, team, was a team from MIT. 
And this was their, this was their pitch. And they said, look, we're, we're giving uh, $2,000 per balloon to the first person to send us the correct coordinates. And $1,000 for the person who invited them. And $500 to who invited the inviter, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, and then it kind of goes on to explain. And what that, that worked well enough. So Sandy Pentland from MIT. So the, the model of uh, rewarding whoever finds the balloon, but awarding whoever invited the inviter is called a query incentive network model developed by Kleinberg in 2005. And they began with a team of four. They ended up with 5,000 participants. And the whole thing took 10 hours. Uh, and in fact, the runners up, which, who used a similar method, had found nine balloons in that 10-hour period, which is, again, you couldn't imagine any individual, any group of humans, whether they were four or 5,000, doing that without the technological affordances. But equally, you couldn't imagine the technology achieving anything like that uh, without 5,000 people going around looking for uh, balloons and inviting their friends. Uh, the key thing is there were two incentives. One, you had an incentive to find and report the balloon, but then you're in danger, of course, of getting uh, people free riding, people in competition with each other. So then the second incentive of to introduce new, uh, new people into the network kind of nullified that question of rivalry. Um, probably running out there. That was just giving you a few examples of how uh, social processes in the finance sector are being used to uh, add additional value to the AI in uh, some uh, quantif uh, quantification, uh, quantified context, but I won't talk through those, so I'll just wrap up. So social, social machines is a kind of a lens on human machine networks at scale. Uh, we see, we tend to see very, we, we tend to expect very rapid and unanticipated assembly, so we expect the unexpected. Uh, bec partly because of the creative and subversive powers of human beings who will never do what you expect them to do. Uh, but in fact, the, you could probably say the same of machines as well. Uh, we were all completely surprised when this technology worked and our slides came up first time. Um, in terms of intelligence, what, what's happening is that the intelligence of both the machine and the human are being augmented by the, the social processes. <coughs> Data is a really big issue. The, the, these these uh, social machines got to create and they're going to consume lots of data, lots of kind of interesting issues about who gets it. And just the ethics piece is very important. There, there are ethical pieces about, well, how do you design these things and how do you manage them? Uh, and what are your ethical responsibilities there? Uh, researchers, clearly you're, you're looking at social interaction, so there are lots of research ethics issues. Uh, privacy is a given, privacy is a problem with all these things, as Mark has already alluded to. Uh, and then there's the issue about, you see a lot of things that we might call social machines in the cybercrime area, uh, ways of, of uh, conning people out of their money. So you, you can get kind of what we might call anti-social machines. Uh, not all these things do, do uh, good. Um, things have started to appear on the research radar, just a couple of projects, uh, which are both just finished. Uh, Socium is uh, sort of an EPSRC project. Uh, that you might want to visit their website. And Smart Society is an EU project covering pretty much the same kind of ground. Uh, that says, please don't sue me if I've stolen your image. Uh, and thank you very much.